you, did you want to talk us through again that um, the production graphic that you have up about the, the gold price and it looks like it's going to go on a, a long ball run for, for some time. Um, just Could you just talk me through that again because I've, it seemed like you were saying when production peaks then after that the gold price goes up which sounds to me like on, in terms of normal supply and demand it almost sounds like the opposite of what, what should happen. So look, looking at those charts yeah. and again this is um, the Bank of, Bank of Canada's uh, charts that once you've hit that production peak, from that point, there's a supply demand gap between if it starts to come off, those major producers obviously wish to invest and expand that production profile. So as that production comes off, the supply gap occurs, mm -hmm. which would then drive price up. The question would be for how long? Interesting that from discovery through to production, the average time is about 13 years historically for gold mines uh, from a paper sort of published a couple, of, a couple of years ago. So even if people dr drill hard, discover hard, find something, even at our accelerated highest uh, gold price wish to get those mines into production, it will take them a decade to get those mines into production unless they've already done all the, stu all the studies, all the approvals, all the definition to get it to that point. So. What's, it's almost the lag of the, the highest gold price has driven the investment decisions that's then built the mines that 10 years later start and then the cycle will start again. And again, that's just a view. It's, it's the fundamentals that we're witnessing. It's not you know, Norman Starr saying, hey, we're, we're reading the tea leaves. It's literally, I guess, advice that's been given to us and we, we look at it and we think we're in those same conditions. We're really in those same conditions right now. And what does that kind of peaking gold price do f for you guys going forward? So for all of gold, all the gold producers that, are, that have that opportunity, there's, there's multiple things that it does. One, it just expands your margin. So cash flows that get generated from your current production profile just get significantly greater. So you either can expand your, your dividends, you can expand your reinvestment to the ground and exploration, or you could just build cash stockpile. Uh, into your onto your balance sheet. Uh, the other side of that is you can bring lower grade material at the same margin or profit into your business that wouldn't typically be mined under a low price environment. What you don't want to get caught and what's been uh, done before is if you lift your costs up and gold's only there for a nanosecond, you've already you're left naked when the gold price falls away. So the disciplined part of that discussion really comes to don't just push your costs up if you have ability, uh, have that variability inside your business to be able to bring it in incrementally. Do you think it's great news for the local Kalgoorlie community? Look, I think it is, but I think things don't happen that quick. If you really got to get that investment and get that discovery and get things moving, um, you can try to make decisions on counter-cyclical environments or you can try to make decisions based on buoyant environments. I think what Northern Star's done over the last five years here in the gold fields has just reliably throughout the seasons, throughout the cycles, invested. Uh, and that's through investing in uh, getting people and skills and in, into our business. Uh, every year, graduates, apprentices, not irris irrespective of what uh, the boom or bust attitude out there is, it's about that continual reinvestment as well as discovery and drilling. That was interesting what you had to say about um, ESG, I thought, Stuart. I was just wondering if you thought, given this, this seems to be a trend where people want you know, clean products, people want socially responsible products. Um, do, you, do you see a time in the future where there might actually be two types of gold that are priced differently? Um, a gold that is clean and, and you know, not produced um, in an environmentally damaging way or where slavery is not used? Or do you, Can you just see a point in time where that, that happens, where there's actually two types of gold priced differently? You could probably comp it to free-range eggs or free-range beef, right? Um, if it's a branding technique, uh, then you know people want to differentiate themselves and say, well, this is only gold from a you know more developed uh, jurisdiction with these sort of criteria, green credit or otherwise. The fundamental act of discovering extracting minerals is the same wherever you do that around the world. It's about making sure that the, the impact of that is you know, minimised uh, on communities if it's a negative impact. So I, d I don't see, gold is gold is gold and it, it has been for, for centuries. Um, 
I don't see people either trying to differentiate from a marketing perspective. I don't think there'd be any advantage uh, for effort based on that. Uh, but I do think that the maturity of those governments and those systems it starts with those tier one jurisdictions and they drag up the expectations globally. And the funds and the capital around the world um, moves pretty fluidly. Uh, so it will move to through those ESG filters that will increasing, in, uh, increasingly grow year on year. That in its own turn will create benefit globally, through even through developing countries. Okay, so, so it's more sort of from an investment point of view that you guys might have an advantage in terms of the SG rather than sort of the, the product itself? It, everyone always gets there, but, you know, in the queue, people are at the front. And so we we just believe we are at a, we are at a strategic advantage of where we're sitting in, that, uh, in the places we operate uh, with the systems we have in place and all the good work we're currently doing. I think the resource sector generally doesn't promote that enough uh, and I think society needs to understand that you can't have what you want without the resource sector. Um, you've copped a little bit of grief from the local community here, the local council here lately over FIFO um, and I appreciate it must be frustrating um, when workers simply just don't want to live sort of locally um, but is there anything the company can do uh, to incentivise your staff to maybe take up a residential position rather than, rather than do FIFO? Is that something the company would consider? or So we, we are doing those things already and we are incentivising staff um, who wish and making removing barriers for staff that want to become new residents to the goldfields. I guess when people look at the FIFO, um, for temporary jobs, for temporary skills, it's almost a necessity because the work is the work is a, a, a defined parcel of work, and unless there's a job at the other end of it, people's commitments, whether that's their family, their housing, their schooling, otherwise, uh, they, then they don't see that. So you have to show the mind life. You have to, have to show them longevity before you're getting a residence to come. It's not about companies or, or, or schools or otherwise. It's around the, the, the security. Um, I don't think it's. I don't think the FIFO is an issue here. I think it's it's something people like to try to highlight or pick on from a negative. And I think there's far more positives um, and the contribution of those things uh, are far greater than the noise that's probably arrived about it. Mm. It must be disappointing to the company given your ties to Calville. You know, I know you and Bill both did, you know, you wasn't training here. Um, that, you know, John Butler and the council have taken this position. You must be a bit saddened by it. Oh, yes and no. There's, um, we just want to deal with facts, always. So our minds um, that are contributing to the gold fields sit in Menzies, Kaguli, Boulder and Coolgardie. So our FIFO group that are Coolgardie based is supported by the Coolgardie community uh, and speak very positively about it. And our minds that are in, Coo in Coolgardie Shire um, are very pleased to have that presence there. So I think depending on who you, who you want to talk to, um, we, we, we don't think there's a problem. Um, we, all, we would be encouraged if we could get everyone to be residents of, of the Goldfields. And as I said, we've lived and uh, worked and studied here uh, over our careers and um, we see the merit in doing that.